Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode number 278, Testosterone's Role in Injury and in Recovery. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So one of the most widely known, uh, common wisdom sorts of of interpretation about testosterone is that uh, what we call the anabolic growth uh, effect of it mm-hmm. when you're young, you see boys mature and turn into men. You see their body shape change; they change from little soft babies into <laughs> angles and planes and muscles, mm-hmm. and they get stronger. And then when people watch mass media and they see ads for testosterone replacement, you know they, they hear about uh, all of the uh, issues involving athletes and perfection of performance through mm-hmm. medical enhancement and all that kind of stuff. What we don't know and what we don't hear about is the real fundamental medical concerns or uh, benefits from testosterone and the fact that as we age, we lose it. Our body starts to diminish the amount that we have, and you can see the curve. You you can see the the shift uh, in our structure, our ability to be upright, our fragility or frailty, uh, and even in, as a doctor, and you know this as a surgeon, When we get older and we experience injuries or we have to have surgeries, what's our recovery rate? What's our body's capacity to reestablish itself and and, um, return us to our pre-injury or pre-surgical state? I I mean, I think think it's a well-known fact that as we get older, we look older. I mean, you can look at somebody and say... That oh, person he's really aged since I saw him yesterday. Yeah, yeah. or that person uh, looks like they're seventy, or that person looks like they're sixty, or that person looks like they're fifty. And what is it in our mind that makes us think someone's a certain age? All the cues we receive, right? And those are cues that are hardwired. Mm-hmm. And when we look at somebody who is bent over and shuffling, usually gray hair, although some of us color it. And, um, and, you know, a sad face, usually, or staring kind of face, and loss of muscle mass. They don't have any shoulders. Yep. They don't have any girdle. They don't have any hips. They have, they're kind of round in the center where the fat is stored. But arms and legs are really skinny. Hands get really frail looking. Those are all things that are related to low testosterone. We say aging but really, the fact is, is that all of those qualities that we view as aging are secondary to low testosterone. So you say that's all hardwired. The the our predator, view of it. The predator in us <clears throat> recognizes the more frail, the weaker, the less fast, the it's easier true. to call from the herd. That's true. And, and so, even though we don't live that way in mm-hmm. our culture, we our physiology and hardwired systems still cause us to recognize that and catalog it innately. So right. we see somebody that looks older, less active, more frail. You, mm-hmm. you see, and, and this is one that when I read about and you taught me about the impact that testosterone replacement can have on this, little old men and little old women walking on a cane bent over like they're walking into a hard wind. And they're looking hill. down. Yes, and their heads are down and not. I mean, I know there are individual medical conditions right. that can impact that as Osteoporosis, well. Osteoporosis, but... Before osteoporosis, before mm-hmm. their bones are bent, this or their spine is bent this way, it's a lack of muscle mass. Mm-hmm. The lack of muscle mass in our back to hold us straight. The lack of muscle mass in our abdomen to oppose our lower back and make us stand up straight. So as the muscles get laxer, our bodies start bending over and, and our bones start dissolving as well. But the first thing we see is loss of muscle. Mm-hmm. And that that's also on, let's look at the, the reverse side. When we're young, you can always see somebody who looks young, 
Okay, not only they do they not have wrinkles, do they not have sagging skin? One of the most important things I look at in in magazines and models is the jawline. A really tight jawline in women right. means great testosterone and younger age. I've got a jawline under here somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, well, I was talking about women. Mm. So I'm not I'm not doing that for men because it's a little different. Yeah. But but when we're looking for mates, and this is hardwired too. Yes. We we are looking for the tallest, most muscly, most angular face, no a uh, prominent nose, prominent forehead. So if we're looking at You're men, still looking for the hunter warrior. All women are looking for the hunter warrior. Yeah. Because the hunter warrior. So us mousy guys would be in trouble. Well, that wouldn't be you though, because you're tall and you have muscle, and you know that's that's you're still in that group that women are looking for because we view that in our minds it clicks and we don't even think about it, but that makes men look testosteroneized, good mates. Good husbands right. protect me. Yeah. That I mean, even though provide for my children. We don't we provide for ourselves now. Right. We don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Yet in our brain, mm -hmm. it's still the same. Right. You're still attracted to that. That right. attraction feature is pretty defined. And you have to be young to procreate, supposedly, mm -hmm. or or to procreate well. You have to be somewhat without artificial interference. Young, you know, right. Yeah. And that means and, and to have lots of sperm requires a lot of testosterone. So those all link together to when to the uh, assessment of age when we're looking at someone. So, so we talk about that. So in this book. is so you can you can think about this. I mean, you can think, yeah, every time you look at somebody, you can decide how old you think they are mm -hmm. based on how they stand, how they walk, how they shake your hand. So when I was younger <laughs> and stupider, men used to do like 10 scales and they would evaluate somebody. Oh, she's a nine or she's an eight. Do women do that for men? Yeah, but we do it less consciously. I mean, I think maybe you nowadays... You do it less as a social activity. Right. You don't yeah. sit you around guys, and talk about yeah. guys. And, and what, women, what men are looking at in women mm -hmm. in terms of uh, fecundity, ability to have babies. You like yeah. that word? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at all women, or they are, as a potential mother, a potential sperm receiver. Mm -hmm. I'm... Ser I mean, basically, yeah. that's what it is. Even though society has covered this with all kinds of things, that's what we're looking for. And um, there's a book called Why Do Women Have Sex, which describes the anthropologic uh, development or non-development of humans. Anyway, that's, that's a more mass market book. There's a science <laughs> book called Sociobiology by uh, Edward Wilson, a professor at Harvard. Well, that looks, sounds like a page turner. <laughs> So I was trying to think of something everybody might <laughs> Why read. Why women have sex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that's you know, and it's it is actually a really great book yeah. for people who aren't psychologists, counselors, or anthropologists. In any case, the desir most desirable woman, even though we've kind of skewed this with models who are very, very, very thin, but when when people Anorexic. Are, people are yeah. looking for a mate. They're not looking for an anorexic. They're looking, they may like to look at them in clothes because clothes are built for five foot eight women who weigh 105 pounds, but they aren't going to marry that woman. They're going to marry the woman that has ample breasts, ample hips, who have soft skin, plentiful hair on their head. Um, they look healthy. Eyebrows. That, mm -hmm. That's healthy. And muscles. Somebody who has like skin hanging off their arms is not the picture of health or the picture of fertility. So, or young, we don't consider that to be young when we have, when you have lax skin. So men are looking at women who are like this to marry or to have sex with, but they may not be looking for that for other things. Conversation for another day, totally. However... Muscle plays a part, and yes. so do bones, because right. they're not going to be looking at a woman who's walking around like this. No, no, I'm standing saying. up straight it requires muscle. So we're talking about muscle and how it relates to aging, but also how it relates to our injuries. You know, we all know that injuries increase as we get older, mm -hmm. and that we have more falls and we have more 
um, miscalculations of while we're driving because our eye-hand coordination doesn't isn't as good. Our mental acuity is not as good. We don't focus as clearly. We don't see as much. We don't process as much. It all starts to fade away. You get macular degeneration. You lose mm -hmm. your vision. It aging process is inherently debilitating and leads to death. Right. So the question is, can we stretch that envelope? Can we recover any of that envelope? Can we do something to, uh, again, when our life expectancy was 40, it really didn't matter. Mm -mm. We wouldn't outlive that functionality of our We only body. looked old for a few years. But now that our life expectancy is getting closer to 80. Mm -hmm. 90. Or 90, there's, there's a real need for something. And especially, uh, I have a relative that in the last year is 84, mm -hmm. 5, uh, in the last year has had uh, shingles severely, mm -hmm. debilitating, kept him up for months, uh, had uh, surgery on his face for uh, skin cancer, uh, kept him in for months, and then this weekend fell and broke his nose, his wrist, and his shoulder. I mean, he's his system is fading. And it's fading because yeah, he's exactly. lost testosterone. Testosterone gives us balance. You know, balance has to do with falling, right. you know. So if you have testosterone, you don't fall backwards. You know, you fall forward like everyone else, okay? So if you are if you trip, you're going to fall forward and catch yourself. If you have testosterone, if you don't, you may fall backwards and hit your head, which is much more dangerous. So if you have testosterone mm -hmm. and you have to have a knee surgery, okay, you have if you have testosterone, you're going to heal in that three months. You're going to be out doing everything you need to do as long as you have optimal um, physical therapy. You're going to heal and get out there. And testosterone is key for healing. It builds cartilage. It builds connective tissue. It builds collagen, and it actually helps everything knit back together. Mm -hmm. So if you're Older doctors look at you and go, eh, you're 80. I don't think I'm going to do that knee replacement. And right. the reason they say you're that, not a good candidate. They you're say. not a good candidate means that either either you have a heart condition, which isn't related to uh, testosterone most times, or he looks at you and he says, oh, man, you're frail. You're not going to heal. You're never going to be better. I'm going to make you worse. Well, doctors don't ever want to make somebody worse. That's not. That's that, but that's the translation of you're not a good candidate in most cases. Well, and they worry about pneumonia. You know, if you can't well, move around, if you're laid up in a bed and or you can't walk and exercise, what kills most of the old people is pneumonia. Well, guess I mean, that's what? The, that's the pneumonia is because you can't take a deep breath, and de not taking a deep breath is not your lungs; it's the muscles around yeah. between your ribs. Generally, yeah, unless in, you're a smoker. Or, well, right, but yeah, okay. There's other reasons not to have surgery, and not and that. Surgeons won't want to operate on you, but in general, the greatest reason is frailty, meaning no muscle on, on your uh, body. You aren't going to be able to get out of bed. You're not going to be able to get out of the wheelchair. Like my, my uh, friend who is now 93, and he came to me at 86, and he said, mm -hmm. and it was because he'd had a knee surgery or a hip surgery, excuse me, three years before that. Three when, years. Three years before he was, so 83. He has his hip surgery out of his wheelchair, does his physical therapy. He's fine because his testosterone, unlike most of ours, is fine still at 83. At 83. Mm -hmm. So he goes back in, same surgeon, same operation for the other hip three years later. And he comes to me. See, he hadn't been taking testosterone before because he didn't need it. Comes to me in a wheelchair. He said, it's three months out. I can't get out of the wheelchair. I don't have enough strength. I haven't healed. I, I really, really need help. And he came to the right place because nobody else, the orthopedic surgeon, and nobody else could help him. So we put him on testosterone pellets. It took him, after they started to work, which is about a month, took him about another two weeks to get out of his wheelchair. Now, he was doing physical therapy the whole time. Got out of the wheelchair. Then he, two more weeks, he was on a cane, stopped using the cane, or a walker, excuse me, and then a cane. And then... He was off and running, and now he's mobile. And now he's 93, but he and stayed on testosterone. He doesn't have a cane, he's not in a wheelchair. Right. Yeah. And he is, his brain's clear. So what you're... So what I'm saying is, 
you need testosterone to heal if you're having surgery after you're 60. And and you recommend people start if they know it's, if it's a, a surgery they can plan mm -hmm. that they should start at least three months before the surgery yep. on testosterone pellets. And why pellets as opposed to two weeks worth of injections? Well, pellets actually give the body the exact testosterone that it had before the testicles or the ovaries stopped so it's working. Bioidentical. So it's exactly the same, mm -hmm. and it's a constant. It's a constant, um, I want to say discharge, but secretion mm -hmm. from the pellets. So, yes, there's a little diurnal change. You do get more during the day and less at night while you're sleeping because it depends on how much you move, how much you absorb. Right. So when we're looking at people who, who are um, needing testosterone, they don't just need a shot that goes up and down, up and down up and down. They need a constant flow, just like they had when they were younger. Less th things that people will Negative say, Saturday. I'm not doing that right. anymore. So, so basically the pellets will make them feel good, relieve a lot of symptoms, but most importantly, will help them heal from surgery. And that's huge, especially, I mean, as a child of somebody who, you know, wanted to have surgery and they said he was a bad candidate. Right. I begged him, my dad, to have pellets so that I could, he would recover from his knee surgeries, wouldn't have surgery, wouldn't take pellets. So his, his life was miserable for the next 10 years. The prophet is never and respected in his own country. My, my life was miserable yeah. for 10 years. So it's not just, if you think you don't want to do something like this so that you can have surgery, so you can be mobile, then I think you should be checking your long-term care insurance, you know, and, and you ought to be talking to your kids. Because right. your kids are who are going to be suffering right there with you because they're going to be taking care of you. Who wants to be taken care of by their kids? So, you, again, your recommendation is if you know you're going to have elective surgery and you're older than 60, you should take testosterone pellets at least three months before the surgery. And six and months at least after. six months after. And you would actually recommend that people maintain more right. than that. But just for a surgical intervention to see what the healing rate is going to be, mm -hmm. Uh, for the best benefit, the, the optimal chance of a good surgery and a good recovery, that at least a nine-month window of testosterone replacement. Right. You need you need you need that. It. I didn't describe this, but testosterone also stimulates growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So when we give it as a pellet, we get testosterone stimulating growth hormone, which also stimulates healing. I'm sure you've heard of growth hormone. It makes you look younger, and right. but we get a twofer when we use pellets. We get. Testosterone st stimulating in a safe way growth hormone, which then helps people heal even faster. So it used to be there was some talk about just giving people growth hormone before surgery and after. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's much more effective to give testosterone in a way, pellets, that stimulate growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So that is, is a surgical plan. I have a lot of plastic surgeons who have uh, patients come in for facelifts or tummy tucks or things like that, but they're 60 or over. And they come in and uh, they say, my doctor won't operate on me unless I get testosterone. Right. And what that means is your skin texture or the thinness of your skin is so thin that the doctor doesn't think he's going to or she's going to have a good outcome. And you may not heal. I mean, in doing a facelift, you have to heal in certain areas around your face if you don't have testosterone, you're unlikely to heal. It so, mobilizes so when you're younger the healing and healthier, cells. Your body can actually target places where, right. that are infected or that are cut or injured mm -hmm. in some way. And I can remember when I was younger, being astonished by how quickly a cut or an injury would heal. I mean, just a matter of aren't days. you astonished now? Because my I heal like I don't in get days. injured as much. I'm not nearly as clumsy as yeah. I once yeah. was. Well, I should never risk. cook because yeah, the those not the effect. knives. I can yeah. do surgery, but I should never cook. That's funny. <laughs> Because I'm always trying to cut myself. But but that's that's because testosterone stimulates the cells, the fibroblasts, all the other blood right. cells that lead to healing. So again, there's a there's a visible change if you if you see it, if you experience somebody that, that's had this kind of intervention, they're less fragile, they're more erect, they walk better, they have better balance, they don't need a walker, they don't need a cane. And you can see that. What you're not see, seeing 
is all the little micro changes in the system that helps them have the capacity to heal mm -hmm. and get stronger from illnesses or diseases that are considered to be the illnesses of aging, like osteoporosis mm -hmm. or dementia. And or, I didn't even mention injuries. Yes, people who not. are injured. Yeah. People who are injured are in car accidents after 60. Right. It is very beneficial to start testosterone as soon as possible so that you can actually heal from that quickly because it's a long, long term. Even if it doesn't term. require surgery. I mean, just, right. Even if it doesn't injury. involve surgery, just right. healing. You know, we don't give immunizations that we give after age 60. I know we still give them to people for the hopefully after 60 they're going to work. But many of them, like immunizations for the flu, immunizations mm -hmm. for pneumococcus, they don't work. Because people without testosterone don't develop the immune cells. Their immune system has been shut down or decreased in activity, doesn't respond to these immunizations. So oftentimes they'll say, oh, after 60, you don't need it. Well, that just means you need it. It isn't going to work. Or so, so that's really of concern as well. With testosterone, immunizations work. So the good news for today is that we now know, and, and substantial medical scientific evidence to support, that in that bell curve of aging, when you get up uh, 60 and uh, above, where you're more fragile and you heal less well, takes longer if you make it back and you continue to decline, there is an intervention that can help you and strengthen you and heal you, and you need to be aware of it, you need to talk to your doctor about it, and it's called bioidentical testosterone replacement. And you can find out about it at biobalancehealth.com. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.